Batman lovers. Whispers in the Sea is an actual play series drawing elements from stories of fantasy horror, political drama, and swashbuckling action and adventure pirate stories. As such, a list of content warnings will always be made available in the description. Ahoy there, sailors, and welcome to another episode of Tales Yet Told, an actual play podcast dedicated to telling weird and fun stories full of imagination, thoughtful characterization, and inclusivity. I am your most humble of game masters, King of Pirates, and, uh, well, uh, your very good friend, Kendrick, or Kendo if you prefer, I use they, he pronouns, and with me today are the saltiest sea dogs any captain could ask for. Gus. Yeah. Man, I just never thought I'd I'd hear a a, a grizzled old pirate captain saying the word just so 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 punctuated inclusivity. That was so powerful. <laughs> that was so good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I uh <laughs> I mean, we're all about inclusivity on this ship. It was Ooh. so it was so tales yet told and I love it. <laughs> oh, thank uh, you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Gus. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm going to be playing the, that, you know, that, the, the, the nasty guy. The nasty guy that I always play. Felix. If you don't know who Felix is, you, this, this shouldn't be your first episode, I don't think, so. I, you see, that's what I say. That's what I've been saying all these couple yeah. of episodes. <laughs> Why are you starting in the middle? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know who else isn't starting in the middle? Ellis. What? You're not what starting in the middle. You're starting at the beginning. Shame that the beginning was <laughs> treacherous. <laughs> anyway, uh, hello, I'm Ellis. I use they, them pronouns. And today I will be playing Thorin, not Eldorus. Eldorus is off being a beautiful bird with uh, Avery and markets. So you don't get the better half today, I'm afraid. Yes, you've either already gotten them or you'll get them in a oh, a week that is after this one that you're listening to now. Still haven't decided Two. what episode what episode is coming out first of these little solo games. My hunch is you'll probably get the other one first, but I could be wrong. Who knows? Uh, this is act. Uh, so uh, if uh, okay, I'm done. I'm done doing the voice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, are you now? Hey, 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 everybody! It's me again. Uh, can track, I don't know where that pirate went. Uh, I think that they just they just kind of skedaddled on out of here right off the plank. Uh, but hey, this is our Nonsense. game. This is Whispers in the Sea, our game of Rapscallion, or the Ashcan edition of it by Whistler, uh, who is at Art of Whistler uh, on Twitter and Tumblr. Again, depending on which episode comes out first, uh, I will you will either have heard me say it wrong or correctly. So, if you've been listening, which you should have been, our crew is currently split up in three different directions. And today, we will be focusing on the group that is on the beach, trying to dig up some treasure, old pirate-fashioned way. Old-fashioned pirate way? No, so, I like I like old pirate fashion way. Old pirate that's, fashion way. That's a, that that's that works for me. Old pirate fashion. That's my aesthetic. <laughs> um. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess uh, there's uh, not uh, not a lot else to talk about. I guess we'll uh we'll just do the dang thing, huh? How about it, folks? Yeah. Let's hear them waves. All 
Our camera fades in on a beach off the coast of Espanora. Our camera is overhead looking at the glistening sands of the early morning coast. Waves from the ocean wash back and forth in slow rhythm. As our camera continues to pan, we see a little rowboat beached on the shore. Four figures like ants from up here moving closer towards it. And another group of five leaving the beach and off towards the road deeper inland. Our camera zooms in and we see it's our crew, or at least some of them. Captain Hano is the closest to the boat as she is reaching into it to grab a couple of shovels and other digging tools and such for the rest of you. She passes off one of the shovels, tossing it to Katarina, who is not too far behind her. And our camera moves closer and closer to Thorin. You are standing here on the beach uh, Avery, Johan, Eldoris, and the other four crew members have just wandered off to go to the market uh, to get supplies necessary for the ship. It is just the four of you here. What does the camera see and, w- and what's going on in Thorin's mind right now? Thorin would like to find whatever it is so that we can focus on the ship and anyone who actually needs care or anything like that. I think Thorin feels like this is a bit of a misadventure that our the best of our minds could be used maybe even better elsewhere. But he's going to try to not, he's trying not to show that he's too salty. So he's just trying to focus so hard on this task at hand that it gets done in quick pace. Amazing. As we see Thorin kind of mentally exhausted, moving towards these rapscallions, what else could we call them? The camera moves past and towards you, Felix. What does the camera see and what is going on through your mind? I think Felix is trying to... I think he's kind of trying to hide his anxiousness with stoicism. I kind of feel like he's just sort of like... I think, no, okay. I think he's like staring off uh, like onto the water, but at an angle that he is watching Katarina out of the corner of his eye subtly. And I think he is trying his best to just not show any emotion right now. I think you hear his voice seeping in like smoke into the back of your mind. Well, isn't this quite the pickle? <laughs> How is our little octopi going to get their way out of this one? Have we established... F- Felix Felix speaks out loud to respond yeah, to, to Damien, right? As far as you have established, every time yeah. Felix has spoken to him, it's always been under his breath. I think, I, yeah, I, I, I want to keep it that way. Like, I would like for him to... Be, not mm-hmm. you know be be as be so inconspicuous easy. as possible here, but that would yeah, be, so be so easy. easy. Uh, but so under his breath, he just says, "I haven't decided yet. I'm trying to think." Oh, well, think all you like, but your blade needs to move eventually. Always has. Always does. Always does. And his voice seeps away, and we're in this moment. Captain Hano it has uh, grabbed in like one hand and an uh, arm, like grabbed up uh, the four shovels and like kind of throw them to like plant them into uh, the sands around her. It says, all right, so according to this map, this should be the place. And she kind of like looks around the beach. It is rather bare. This isn't like the kind of beach that people just like kind of come and visit uh, casually. It's not uh, anything like that. It's just a part of this place and the natural commute from going from one place to another. It is bare. It is sand. It is a beach. There are a couple of palm trees that are growing out of the sands, kind of sprinkled in here or there. But other than that, it's just a beach. What do you all do? I think eventually, like, Felix shakes himself kind of out of the realm of thought that he's in and, and, and sort, of, sort of snaps back to reality. Are Katarina and the, and the captain still, like, getting, you know, uh, uh, supplies and stuff? Or 
Uh, I think uh, Captain Hano no longer is. She's like grabbed the shovels and I think Katarina is going to get the rest of them like large like burlap tarps and like bags and like boxes and like pickaxes yeah. uh, because, you know, you might run into like larger uh, pieces of like stone or something like you all truly have no idea what it is you're looking for. So like they kind of just brought a little bit of everything just in case. Uh, and Katarina yeah. and Katarina is still getting that, and Captain Hano is just kind of taking a look at this place, trying to get her bearings. Yeah, I think Felix, when he kind of when he snaps out of it, I think he goes to help Katarina. Okay, you walk on over to her, and you see like she's trying to get out uh, this. I think it's like a crate of rope. Uh, that has been brought for, you know, if you all, like, need to make a thrown together, like, pulley system or be able to, like, tie it around something and, like, pull on it together. Um, And it's kind of at this awkward angle and it's a little heavy. And I think you move in to maybe possibly help as she's, like, trying to get this box up. And as you lend a hand, uh, she turns to you and says, oh, thank you. And I think you see, like, she kind of, like, blushes a little bit and like but and like tries to like keep her eyes down mm -hmm. uh felix felix is also like is is not looking at her mm -hmm. i think um and he, he but he but he but he goes oh it's no trouble at all katarina just uh eager to discover whatever is waiting for us you know oh, aren't we all it's gotta <laughs> be something big for captain to be so all gung-ho about it. Ah, oh, yes, yes. This is exactly what I was hoping for when I set sail with this with this ship, with this crew. This is the kind of thing that got my blood boiling. You do seem to be one for adventure. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What about you? Oh, well, and I think, like, the two of you, like, are, like, setting down the box uh, as, mm -hmm. you know, you get to this point. She says, oh, well, I didn't really imagine much adventure in my life when I was younger, I guess. Just, uh... Wasn't really the life that was set out for me. But I'd rather be here than wherever I would have been. And where's that? Oh, fancy dinners, uh, dressing parties, uh, things of that nature. Hmm, high society. Oh, well, not that high. I'm sure my father would like it to be, but, you know, we're not too much of nothing. We're a small clan, but uh, gives a lot of pride to my father and mother as well, but they never really mean all that much to me. Especially seeing as how we even got there in the first place. Dirty business. And I think she like starts to like move on uh, back yeah. to uh, the little boat to get more stuff. Well, I won't press any further if uh, it's a tricky topic. But believe me, I know my share of dirty business. Oh, really? Well, I mean, I guess I could have guessed that with the whole blowing ships up <laughs> business. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's, 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 it wasn't always just like that. It was, you know, most of my tricks and uh, schemes are a bit smaller than that. But I'm proud of my recent work, I have to say. Well, you definitely do good work, though I guess I'd love to see some of your smaller tricks if they're even half as <laughs> spectacular as that one. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. We'll see if we have time. Of course. And uh, the two of you uh, continue uh, working. Thorn, what are you doing? Thorin sees Hano uh, kind of looking out and giving direction as needed and uh, walks up to her. He says, uh, so, Captain, I have a few ideas, but how would you like to handle the rollout of our uh, excavation? Well, on the map, X marks the spot was between two palm trees. I guess we can probably find it somewhere around there, but a lot of fucking trees. I do see some trees. Yeah, I, I did also notice that the trees that were marked, that had the hex marked by them, they were further from the tree line. So I think we can remove a lot of extra baggage. But I do worry. We don't know how old this map is. We don't know if one of the trees has fallen down. Um, I can... Uh, do we have a... This is probably a dumb question. Do we have a rake? Uh... uh... Maybe? Or something like it. Oh. Uh, I was just thinking if, if, if a couple of people with rakes could just like go across the water line around where there are trees, if there's any stumps we're missing, I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's a no, that's a that's a good idea. Um I can go hey and we'll like turn uh to where uh Katarina and uh Felix are. It says, if we got a rake in there, get or something like it. 
Yeah, yeah. Bring it, bring it over here if you can. A couple if it exists. All right. No, that's a that's a good idea. No, that's a good idea. I uh, like it. How, uh, how are you doing, Captain? It's been a bit more eventful than probably either of us would have preferred. We're lucky to be here, aren't we? I, I'm uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to size her up in this moment? I would like to yeah, size her up. Yeah, because I think you do, you moment. get you get a sense that there there is a lot going on up there. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Here. Uh, uh, so when you size see. someone up, uh, roll plus vinegar. Uh, plus vinegar. Shite. That's my one thing that has a minus. Oof. <laughs> That's a three. The B minus one. That's a two. Ooh, <laughs> a two. Hey, okay. Well, first of all. You get experience points. Yeah, always do, don't I? Yep. Uh, and, oh, man. It doesn't really say what happens when you fail. But there's the general thing that happens when you fail. And that means I get to make a move as hard as I want. <laughs> this was a trap. This is <laughs> this is a trap you've put me in. Sorry, I'm just reading my moves. Just remember you have it within your power, power to be merciful. I know, I know, I know. Oh, I know that. I just don't care, you see. I know, I know. Okay, I know what happens here. You know, you ask that question, you see she just kind of like shuts down completely. Just like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm doing good. And she like uh, walks off towards uh, the uh, boat where Felix and Katarina are for uh, to grab the rake that, that uh, they're pulling out. He was hoping to talk to her longer, even if not about how she was doing, just in general. So as she walks away, she's like, he's like, oh, it, uh, oh. I'm sorry. This was the most merciful thing I could think I of. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, as she walks off, what do you do? Thorin's sad. Thorin was really hoping to talk to her and, and apologize, but maybe another moment will see itself up. But also... <laughs> The three people Thorin likes, or likes the most isn't correct. The three people that Thorin is closest to are definitely not here. You know, it's mm. Eldorus, Johan, and even even Avery. You know, they've been kind of building a little thing. You know, they're all in the towns. But frankly, that's where he would want them. He knows that that's a good little town. He's a little jealous that they're going to be around and in that place. They might even go to the uh, Breeze Elise, get some fried batfish, and he's jealous of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's just ready to start digging and see what life throws at him out of the not maw of hell this time. Yeah. So awesome. As we move along, uh, tell me, uh, what is the strategy here? that we're going with uh, either as a group or if an individual has a different strategy for like how they want to go about this digging thing or like how they want to go about looking, please feel more than free. But uh, yeah, tell me, tell me what you're doing. It's a good question. I think Thorne takes the initiative and says, uh, kind of yells out, Hey, when everybody's got everything, if we'd like to get our heads together, get our, get our minds clear on what we're doing, come on over. In a hope to kind of get everyone. Yeah. Captain so we've got everybody. Yeah. Captain Hano and Katarina come over. Okay. What about Felix? Yeah. All right. So the way I see it, we can also see in addition to there being a couple of trees by this X, we've got a rake to, you know, use by anything to see if there's any tr hidden tree stumps or this or that, anything we're missing. We can also see that the location of said item or items be what it may are kind of on a curve of this incline in this beach so i believe there's about a mile expanse where you could technically call it curve uh so if we just i see i think there's two obvious places within this mile spance on this curve that have two trees clustered together sometimes one of them has three trees clustered, but it could just be that another tree grew since then. We just don't know. There's another space or two where there is just one tree, but again, there could be a tree that was felled. Um, so I suppose, I don't know, which one, just eyeballing it, looks the closest to what we're looking for. She turns, looks down, uh... Because I figure we could at least send someone to start digging there. A couple more people can rake, and one other person, we can send them somewhere to dig. 
as well. Yeah. She turns and like kind of points out to a general like area where it's like, could be these, this grouping over here, could be that one over there. Um, <sighs> Felix, if you want to go check out that one, Katarina, you could go do this one. And she like kind of points at like another one that's like not too far away from where you are, Felix. And then says, uh, I can grab this one. And uh, there's one over there if you want to grab uh, that group in. You got it, Captain. I think Felix just nods. All right. We'll give it a couple of hours, see how it goes. You know, shouldn't take more than I imagine. Hour and a half, two hours to really get a real good look at some of uh, at your at your area. If you find anything of note, let us know. Right. Here's hoping. Break. <laughs> okay. And she uh, starts walking over to her spot. Okay. So. All right. Everyone starts heading over to your places. You start digging. It is a hot day here in Espanora and very humid for this area. Uh, this island, uh, Exercitula of Espanora, uh, is the smallest of the three major islands and the one that is the most southwest of them. It kind of acts as this little barrier between the two larger islands and the rest of the world. This island kind of has like a central mountain range that has this humongous mountain kind of in the center of it all and like all of you can see that surrounding its peak and kind of going out a couple of miles in every direction around it is this thunderstorm ever present always thundering flashes of lightning and raining it is this almost magically conjured storm the two of you would probably be familiar with why the storm is here for this is how the land reacts when a dragon lord makes its home. As Fort Lucha, the fort that's kind of built into this mountain that the storm is surrounding, is also home to the dragon lord, Yuvia, the storm dragon. And this is the way that the world reacts to her presence. Hmm. <sighs> So it's kind of humid here because it's always raining. <laughs> it's been yeah. raining for 87 years and it's hot. Uh, I think it's like 30 minutes in. The, all of you all are like kind of going about your digging. What is Thorin thinking uh, while uh, he is hard at work uh, digging uh, amongst the groupings of trees that... Thorin thinks this sucks. <laughs> Thorin thinks... <laughs> That this is lame. Thorn's got sand up his ass. Thorn's just not pleased. Mm -hmm. uh, Thorn does not like digging. He's had to dig enough uh, throughout his youth, and he's had to dig trenches. He's had to dig wells. And this isn't even mud. That Thorn can get behind digging a hole in some mud. That's fine. Yeah. Sand. You would think that a pirate be like, oh, the beach, sand, great. Not Thorn. Thorn is not a sand person. But Thorn is also intently looking, scraping, you know, desperately trying to find something, trying to think, if I was a dipshit who was trying to bury something for God, some godforsaken reason, how deep would I do it? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Thorn thinks, do a hole that's four by four and four feet deep, or at least try to within the four hours. If I don't find anything, then that's just that's just how it goes. Mm -hmm. But Thorin is uh, also looking down the way. Thorin is lucky enough that when he was the last person that Hano uh, said, "Hey, you go here," so Thorin can kind of see around some. Uh, like Katarina looks like an ant because she's the furthest away, but can kind of see everybody working yeah um what does thorin see of like everybody working everybody working uh mm -hmm. also if something were to come up in the in the ground that would also be good gotcha. Anything. Gotcha. i mean yeah, thorin yeah. is desperately looking for anything yeah no 100 percent. i think 
As, you know, the day is going, the sun is rising, the shadows of the trees moving. You, like, you know, take a couple of minutes every now and then to just kind of wipe the sweat off your brow, take a look down. Uh, I think you see a lot of people are kind of doing, like, the kind of the same thing. As you're digging for now, like, you haven't found anything yet. It's a lot of sand. A lot of sand, yeah. shells, you know, that kind of thing. So you haven't found anything yet. I will say that if Thorin finds crustaceans, if Thorin finds uh, little crabs or this and that, uh, if Thorin finds a shiny shell, he's got a little bag <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, to collect things um, that's either dietary succulent things for Johan or shiny, well, or for also Eldorus. She might just take the whole bag. Mm-hmm. Uh or looking for something shiny, some sea glass, some, you know, anything that the special people uh, in his life yeah. would enjoy. Amazing. Yeah, I think you spend a lot of this time digging through uh, uh, digging through the beach, finding a lot of these small little trinkets, seashells, sea glass, all of this good stuff. Uh, and, you mm-hmm. know, kind of figuring out, like, what do you actually want to pocket? What actually isn't that worth? Uh, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Felix. Yeah. Uh, as you are digging, uh, having to do this hard manual labor, uh, what's what's going on through your mind? Yeah, I think Felix is, you know, I, I, I think he's actually kind of appreciating the opportunity to like, yeah, because because I think like do, that kind of exertion uh, is is kind of taking his mind off things. I think he's like taken off his like overcoat that he usually wears and has uh, and has uh, uh, laid it aside neatly, uh, making sure it doesn't get too too messy. And I yeah, I think he's like he's more focused on the actual act of digging than he is like about actually finding anything like, you know what I mean? Like it's it's more about the he has made it more about the process than the uh and the actual goal of it. Um, but I think, I think as he goes, the, 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 the nervousness that he had before kind of starts to, to creep back in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think, mm, okay. At one point he says under his breath, he says, do you have any suggestions? Who? Little old me. <laughs> yes. I know you've, you always have plenty of taunts, plenty of vague Little, little threats almost, but never any solid suggestions. Do you want my help, Felix? What would that entail? If you want my help, then addition to the arrow you already owe me. I need you to get me a book. A book? Book of notes. One of your dear friend Avery's. <sighs> uh. He's a clever boy. He keeps notes. On everything he sees, hears, and learns. I could use that. You want me to stay on this ship, right? I do. You'll replace it. With an exact copy, I can provide it. But first, I need the journal. They'll never even know it went missing. Hmm. Well, classic petty theft seems like exactly- Do you want my help or not? Yes. Good. Then stop digging. Take another look at that map. Seems like all of y'all have forgotten that there is magic afoot. Your memory means nothing, and things are always changing. Yeah, Felix is 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 just in thought for a moment, and he says, "I'm I'm sorry. What do you? There's magic afoot, always changing." Well, of course. At first, the map was blank. Answer a riddle, and it's drawn. Magic is always changing. It's the very nature of things, sadly. Right. And what's changed here? Look at the map. Uh, yeah. Uh, Captain Hano has it. Yep. Yep. Felix, uh, Felix drops his shovel mm-hmm. and, uh, goes over to Captain Hano. Are uh, you, like, kind of, like, uh, march through the sand past, uh, where Katarina is, and she kind of, like, looks up, wipes the sweat off her brow, uh, while this is happening, and, like, kind of, like, Felix, what's wrong? I need to see the map. And you, like, just keep moving past. Uh, Thorn, like, as you're digging, you see, uh, you see Felix, like, kind of throw down his shovel and, like, start marching over towards mm-hmm. uh, where Captain Hano is. And uh, Felix, you get to Hano, and she 
she has like a rig kind of setup. Uh, actually, I think what she's doing is she's doing the raking. And so she just has like one hand, like her right hand down like the shaft a little bit and like the rest of uh, the arm of it, like underneath her elbow. So she can like have a bit of leverage over it and like is dragging it through the sand. She sees you moving towards her and says, yeah, Felix, the, the map. I, I, I need to see the map. What? Why do you need to see the... Because we're missing something. We've just been at it for like 30 minutes, Felix. I know. But this is a magical map, if you recall. And we are out here with shovels. Okay, you make a good point. Um, <laughs> and she <laughs> uh, drops the... Um, drops it and uh, takes out the little uh, like kind of map holder and takes it out. And you walk over towards her. She unfurls it. And sure enough, the map is different. Where the map was in the middle of it is, again, blank as it was before. The dotted line still surrounding it. But there is a new riddle that is here. And it says, I can only live where there is light, but I die if the light shines on me. What am I? I think I think I think Felix knows this immediately. Oh, for sure. And I think Captain a potato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I think both you and Hano uh, kind of like get it at probably at the same time uh, and just kind of look at each other and says, what the, what do we do with that? It's a shadow. Yeah, no, I get that. What, what do we, how do? Either we take the map into the shadow or shadows are where we're supposed to be looking. Boren, uh, while you guys were talking, felt the need, like you guys brought out the map, you look like you're figuring things out. So you've piqued Thorne's curiosity. Uh, so when you say that, Thorne says, don't, uh, sorry, but uh, shadows move with the sun. It would have to be something fairly fixed. Okay. What if you're right, it would move, but assuming nothing changes, a shadow will always end up in the same place at the same time of day, right? Right. More or less. I mean, but what are, what are we looking for? Are we here at the right time? Yeah, but how the fuck do we know what the right time is? I, 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 I can't, I could not possibly know. Sorry to butt in again. When did we find that the map had, uh, uh, updated? Just now? Huh. I don't know when that happened. I don't, it, no, it, it definitely wasn't like this this morning, which means it changed at some point between when we left the ship and now. So I guess we know we're in the right place. But These things always change when you're not looking. Could it also be that it's the right time? Maybe it only shows up on the map when it is the right time. She looks up to you and says, it might be right. And then just starts like kind of like looking taking the shadows. map and like walking around looking for shadows. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. What kind of shadows are you all looking for? Dark. Dark. Yeah. Sh shady um, shadows, you know, uh -huh. those, yeah. those kinds. Yeah. I think Thorin walks to places that only have two or more trees. Yeah. And Thorin looks to see if any of the trees that are casting shadows have created an X. Yeah. Strangely enough, there is one. Mm. Thorin starts digging. You start digging. <laughs> Uh, I think Katarina like sees that like all of you have like started moving and like had stopped shoveling and like kind of just looks off like what is and then sees you like pointedly digging in one spot and goes okay and comes over yeah. and I think tries to help you as well. Mm -hmm. Felix what do you do once you start seeing like the two of them starting to dig in this one spot? Felix goes over and I think is 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 like just kind of standing a short distance away, just kind of like watching, kind of seeing like, is this going anywhere? Is this like, is this mm -hmm. something? Yeah, and they're digging. And I think, digging, and I think uh, Captain Hano like sees like the two of them starting to dig. And like, I think like looks on the ground, notices like the X made by the trees and goes, oh, fucking yes. And kind of takes the map. I think like moves past you, Felix. And like, kind of like thrusts like the map like in like your hands, uh, mm. or like like kind of like against your chest, um, and picks up uh, one of the loose shovels and goes over and tries to start helping. Uh, and the three of you are digging here. And X marks the spot, and you dig, and you dig. What are you thinking? As like the three of you are now like, 
fucking just going at it. Right now, I'm just hoping to God that I'm right and how cool and dope it would be if I was right, because then we would be done with the Sandy Diggy nonsense. But also, Thorin is watching Hano dig. Is she... What is her disposition? Is her digging focused or is it desperate? Is it lackadaisical? Roll me a size up. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing them dice, baby. Please. You're going to hurt me if it goes bad. I'm more scared I'm <laughs> of fucking it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Ooh, what's that? No. What's that? It's a six minus one. It's a five I'm, and it's cursed number. I'm so sorry. You do no, get one not. XP. You're you're yeah. gonna you're gonna level up so soon. It's gonna be so great. I've already That's... leveled up once and I'm over halfway to my <laughs> Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Just... Bunko rolls. <sighs> Let's hope you survive. God damn it. What do you do to me this time? The two of you are digging. Or, sorry. The three of you are digging. And you were like kind of looking up a little bit to check on, you know, where Captain Hano is um, mentally mm-hmm. at the very least. Um, and I think you do see like there's like this kind of desperation in the way mm-hmm. that she is shoveling. And, like she's got, again, like holding kind of the same grip uh, with the shoulder. And I think kind of maybe even... Uh, I think actually for this, uh, she has hooked uh, the shovel into uh, the hook of her left hand to use as leverage, mm-hmm. uh, and like to kind of like make it like a like a lever of kind uh, of a sort. Yeah, and is like she's digging like so like haphazardly and like it's not like oh digging in the same spot she's like bam like one spot and then like another spot like a couple of inches to the left and then like she's just kind of going for and i think katarina is kind of taking on that same energy like absorbing it from like hano being so like desperate Mm -hmm. and like excited like we're finally gonna fucking get there this is all gonna be worth it this all meant something and as they are digging and digging and digging and digging and digging I think there's this brief moment where you, Felix, you are kind of standing there, like, watching them all dig. And, like, just, it's, like, 15, 20 minutes that they're digging, like, this huge hole, like, going as hard as they can. And I think there's a whisper in the back of your mind, not literally, but you remember what you just told Hano. These things are always changing when you aren't looking. And, Felix, you see, like, as you, like, take a peek at the map, you see that the riddles change. I'm something that is round, but I don't ever tell the time. I'm often found in a purse. I might be a penny or a dime. And as you notice that there is this new riddle, Thorin. Yeah. You hit something. Uh Uh-huh. You see, it's this wooden plaque, as you start to pull it out, tied to, like, on all, like, on the four edges of this rectangular wooden plaque is rope that is, like, kind of tied to like something in the ground um, that's like Mm -hmm. deeper in there. And there's writing that is on this like wooden piece. Uh, It's in Belanusian or Belvoir, I guess is what their language is called. First thing that happens when uh, he hits something, he looks down to make sure that it's not just a stupid rock. (laughs) Uh, And then says, oh, everyone, everyone. Yeah. I think Katarina and uh, Captain Hano like kind of stop, freeze, and like look down to see what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Thorn uh, gets on his knees and gets right up close to whatever this vessel is and starts to dust away the sand to see the letters. Um, and he looks up and says, "Does anyone speak Belanusian here?" Captain Hano chimes in, and she, I think like she's just like reading it from there, you know? Right. I'm a gun down with you. Blinded and bound, begotten brothers of Roy Rangeur, be born, be free, be plentiful. What? Well, this is stupid. And I think she, <laughs> and I think she like quickly just like like grabs it to like tug it. Um, yeah. And the ropes pop, 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 snap. Yep. And there's this like moment of silence as like the three of you are like looking at each other, and then you start to hear it. The low rumbling, the movement through the sand as hundreds upon hundreds 
of small bodies begin to move through the sand underneath it like little bumps under skin. <sighs> Sifting and moving. And I think you start to see some of them begin to claw up their tiny little claws. <sighs> sifting through sand, trying hurriedly to get out, and you start to see the little noses start to peek out through the sand. It's hundreds upon hundreds in this pit with you slowly starting to come up, and the first head pops out, and you immediately know what it is, and you know you are in deep trouble, as this is a radis eel nest. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> oh, shit. What do you do? You could definitely try to get out of here. Yeah, um, I'm looking at breaking her out. I'm yeah. looking at you. Also have your own playbook move. That's what I was yeah, also gold. looking. Yeah, don't forget also okay. because of your tattoo. When you use breaking her out, you can bring someone with you. Yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna use breaking her out, and I'm gonna try to get Hano with me. Okay. When you see an opening to break in or out, roll plus blood. What does this look like as you are starting to make this movement? As soon as I see Rattus Eels, uh, Thorin... Oh, shit. What does Thorn have? A cutlass. Thorn grabs his cutlass and is attempting to just scoop Hano back, do a quick swipe to try to just slice through any Rattus bodies that he can and then aims to, once again, bride-style carry someone out of a bad situation and just book it back to the ship. Awesome. Uh, okay, roll plus blood. All right. Oh, thank God. Okay, that's a 10 plus 1. That's an 11. Ooh, amazing. On a hit, you've got in or out. Choose one. So yeah, you will choose one of the four options for breaking or out. Either you suffer one harm or weakness, you hop from the frying pan into the fire, you lose track of something important, you lose evidence or attract attention. So you'll get out for sure. But both you and Hano will get out for sure. I am content to... Ah, this is tricky. Mm -hmm. I think it's either hop from the frying pan into the fire uh, or lose track of something important. Okay. Both of them are uh, ooh, a bit dicey. I think either of those make the most sense. Yeah, for sure. <sighs> obviously, we don't have the thing. Mm -hmm. So I think obviously running from the spot means that we would lose track of the vessel unfortunately. You would lose track of the vessel? What vessel? Sorry. Yeah, what's in the ground, what we're trying to dig up, because gotcha. I immediately swooped us out of here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully other people keep track of it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that just makes the most sense for the context. Yeah, I think uh, you start to, uh, you know, sl you slice through some of the radis eel bodies. When they come out of the ground, they are these long, smooth creatures. These are babies, you know. You just uh, mm -hmm. came into the nest. But even as, like, hatchlings, these things are still about like a foot and a half long. They have like these small, like beady eyes, six legs um, along its body, sharp little like pinkish fleshy claws um, and a smooth body with like little bits of like minuscule, like micro hairs uh, along mm -hmm. it. And they are like uh, a, a mixture of like these like um, dark gray to like kind of brownish and white spotted creatures letting out like this hideous, torturing chorus of screeching and squeaking and like as they're like hopping out of the ground like trying to like grab at you you slice through a few of them are able to like kind of back your way you and Hano up the side of this hole and out there uh, you see Katarina is kind of taken off guard a little bit seeing this and like she starts like trying to like turn to get up but slips and falls and is like trying to claw her way like climb her way out as the radis eel are like starting to hop on top of her clawing uh her just in an attempt to like try to get out of this hole and out to the ocean where they want to be felix you see this what do you do this is a this is a, this is a good question you pose mm -hmm. what does felix do and I don't think Thorin and Hano are looking right now I will say even if 
Katarina dies from here, you still need proof mm-hmm. to give back. So you would still need to, to, to get something from her to prove that, you know, she is dead. But this is a good opportunity. Okay. I think Felix, Felix says under his breath, in a few seconds, I'm really going to need your help. You were asking for a lot of favors recently, but sure. Appreciate it. And he jumps in. <laughs> Whew, okay, you jump in. Uh, you see uh, there are still like hundreds upon hundreds of these things and they're starting to make their way out of this hole. So you are like sliding into this hole full of these long eel-like uh, rodentia that are like clawing their way out of this hole, like screaming and screeching and squeaking as they're trying to make their way out of uh, out of the hole and in, into the ocean, like clawing and climbing all over Katarina and like a few of them like taking swipes at you and a, kind of like a defensive knee-jerk reaction as you were like getting into the nest and like stepping on and over uh, some of them as you make your way down. What are you doing? I am trying to get to Katarina. I'm trying to trying to grab her. Okay. Uh, can I get you to, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What is this? Hmm, is this breaking our out? Maybe, but I think there's going to be a break out in a second. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Can I can I hit you with that? Maybe maybe if he like sees that this is a problem, like maybe he takes out his sword. Maybe he's like kind of cutting a path for himself. Do you want this to be a striker shoot? I think so. Okay. I think I yeah. think that's what he would do if like he's like, oh man, I'm not getting getting through these otherwise. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, when you striker shoot someone, roll plus blood. All right. So let's hope that's a seven. Okay, on a seven to nine, you stumble, trade blows, or put yourself in a bad position. Your choice. I think you're like, you're, you've you taken out your, what is, you have a cutlass or a rapier? What is it that you have? It's a rapier, yeah. So, Felix, you take out your rapier and you start like stabbing and slashing and carving a path through these. Even like you're, you're cutting through some of them, but a lot of them are just kind of moving out of the way now that you're doing yeah. this. And you're starting to carve out a path and you make your way over towards her. And like as you like start to like reach out to like see if you can grab her, you're overtaken. You trip, and you start to fall. And in this moment, I'm going to give you a choice. Okay. In the way that you're falling right now, you will fall forward, blade outstretched, and it will pierce the heart of Katarina Reichman. A complete and total accident. No one could fall to you. Or you could throw your blade just in time and like you'll be there. You'll like land on top of her. You'll be right there if you need to get out and like find a way out. You totally can. Or you could take the kill. I think, do you, do, I mean, do you think that like, do you think that Felix realizes that this is an yes. option? That like, well, that I think I think it's more interesting. Yes, if he does. I think like I think you were seeing it like you're like, bam, 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 slicing it. And then like you start to like ah, you lose your footing, your arm gets outstretched and like you can see you are a trained swordsman. You can tell the direction your blade is going. You could see it. And I think in this like kind of split moment where you're like, holy shit, fuck, this is how I want this to happen. This is an accident. This is an accident. As you're in the slow fall in your mind, you recognize that this is an option. You could easily explain this away. You were obviously going down to help her. There are people who will argue for sure. And the people may be upset about it. But at the end of the day, the facts are on your side. Why would you kill her anyway? You know, you have no reason to. It was obviously an accident. I think, I think Felix, in a, you know, brief flash of, of feeling that, you know, he wouldn't really, you know, he, he wouldn't really be able to exactly articulate this uh, in this way until, until later. But I think Felix is so tired of everything he does being affected by outside forces, including fate including chance. And I think he decides that if he is going to do this, he needs to make the choice to do this. And, and he throws the, throws the sword out of the way. You throw the sword out of the way. You fall on top of her hard. She got, ah, ah, but you are currently covering the radis eels that were kind of over there, like move out of the way as you fall. 
and now they're crawling on your back and you've kind of like you're currently on top of her in a way where like they're now clawing and like running along you not her and you still feel like as like if you could like grab her you could definitely like leverage yourself to get up and and start moving if you would like to make a break in or out i would love to kendo but unfortunately i don't make the break in or out rolls for felix that's so true that's so true (laughs) no yeah so i think as soon as felix is is confident he has a he has a hold on her i think he says under his breath now all right when you see an open or breaking or out roll plus blood that's an eight well on a hit you've gotten in or out choose one on a seven to nine the fates choose as well so i'm so damien as a character is picking one and then i as a gm will be picking one yeah so you're picking two (laughs) yeah yeah no but i want to i want to state that these are from two different perspectives i get you i get you my gm one is you're going to suffer harm or weakness you're going to suffer two harm for this okay as you are being clawed up and like and and scrambled on by all of these uh eels and the one that damien is going to choose there's a really good one here that damien wouldn't choose that unless damien is going to choose that you suffer a harm or weakness oh i the gm am going to say you leave evidence or attract attention okay You're underneath this pool of climbing rodent eels, scratching and crawling along your back. And you lean in, kind of like almost like holding her a little bit. And like you whisper under your breath right next to her ear. Now, in a swirl of ashy black smoke, the two of you are whisked away out of this hole of rodent eels climbing out trying to make their way to the ocean and you're back on the little raft that the four of you took out here watching as thorin and captain hano are like running away from this swarm of eels like a tidal wave that you're seeing wash over the beach and out towards the ocean thorin you are with you're still like have you have you like put down hana or are you still just carrying her uh i think at some point she would have been like okay okay i can run you know and so i think they've run and they're at a point now where they both kind of look back Mm -hmm. to see the state of things because you know there was also felix catalina at which point i imagine they just see a big poof of black smoke yeah uh to which thorin says ah they're fine (laughs) And you turn back and Uh, you're looking towards the raft where you're running towards and you see, ah, there they are. Yeah, see the ah, bastards. All right, let's go. And you're uh, you're Uh, running towards that direction. Yeah, we're just trying to get towards the raft. Yeah, I think uh, you run out uh, towards the raft and you see uh, all of the rats. They aren't like chasing you. They don't care about you. They're just trying to get to the ocean. And so by the time you make it to the raft, I think it's kind of outside this kind of wave of radiceals and the four of you can kind of like take this moment and like as you're just kind of looking out and seeing eventually it does end it is this large 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 pool of these eels this large wave but it does have an end and eventually you watch they all race and race and race out into the ocean and finally i think you see like the last contingent of them like dive beneath the water and out towards the ocean out Mm -hmm. towards your ship. Well, that, uh, wait, towards the ship? Yeah, your ship's out there. Oh, Kendrick. Not towards the ship. It's the, out towards the ocean. I mean, the ship's out there, you know. Well, yeah. you're just gonna have to g- g- do a very, very close inspection. Mm. <sighs> Anyways, yeah, I think, I think Thorin, now that everybody's in the raft, uh, Covered in sand, blood, sweat. You know, I imagine everybody got a little scratch on him at least. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. It's just, well, that, um, that was some shite, wasn't it? That was, uh, fuck. I, that was, and I think, like, there's this moment where, like, you're kind of, you you were, like, holding on to her, Felix. Um, yeah. And I don't, like, did you let go or, like, are you still, like, kind of, like, in shock, like, holding her, like, watching? As oh, I think happening? he's in shock. 
Yeah, for sure. So you're still like kind of holding her and she's in your arms kind of like looking out at this thing. And then I think there's this moment where she like realizes this and goes, I'm sorry. And like, uh, like gets up and like kind of pushes you away and is like looking oh. like away from you. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, oh, stop. Uh, 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 don't, don't worry about it. Thorin and Hano, you are also obviously here. I think Thorin looks at Hano. Uh, trying to study her just to kind of see where she's at. Are you trying to size um, up again? No! <laughs> Do you it. Still, that hammer still <laughs> hasn't fallen down on me. You mean the from the failure you just had before? Yeah. That was the hammer. Oh. That was it. Good. It just oh, happened. <laughs> okay. That was my hard move. The rat is Oh, oh okay. I didn't know if you were just fucking so bad. I, I, I don't know. No, that's no, your fault. For- you rolled back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to point out that uh, Alice has made two uh, size up rolls this uh, this this game. The first one, uh, the the hard move was, oh, the captain is uh, is made a little uncomfortable or something, you know. That and the second off. hard move is uh, ten thousand horrible horrible eels come out of the ground. Hundreds, hundreds. I said hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds. So ten thousand is yeah, not a bad number. Get enough hundreds in there. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I don't need this. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> Thorn looks at Hano, uh, who I imagine is disheveled. I will not be checking. Uh, oh, she and, is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, says, they, uh, they look like they've cleared out. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to go see if I can? What can I do? I don't know, Thorin. You see, she's just kind of dejectedly looking off into the ocean in the direction of the ship, mm. probably having a lot of the same thoughts that Thorn is, at least about the Radis. Right. I think at some point, uh, Felix just sort of remembers and he um, he gives the map uh, back to uh, back to, to Captain Hano and says, it changed again. Fucking magic. <sighs> And like opens it and looks at it. I'm something that is round, but I don't ever tell the time. I'm often found in a purse. It might be a penny or a dime. A coin? That's my best guess. What the fuck does that have any? And I think you see her like just like kind of like fall to her knees. And just no. like kind of like sits down like like uh, like knees like bent. Uh, just like arms out map on like in the sand (laughs) just like fuck the thing we're looking for it's no longer there you i mean it might still be you don't know because i mean that's the first thing thorne's gonna do it's like okay the radis have cleared out i'm gonna go see if the damn thing's still there yeah i think as you go over there and like kind of like this large kind of, and the holes kind of like made itself a little larger just from the scrambling of everything. Right. This large hole, the shot is like this overhead shot. Thorn is walking over towards the like larger hole. Shovels are like kind of half buried in sand as everything's been kind of shifted around. And like the large overlooming shadows of the X still like over the center of the circle as you are walking up towards it looking around and you see like the wooden plaque is still kind of half buried in the salmon as well and you see like little bits and pieces of like the rope that have snapped uh from when uh hano pulled it and uh, i think as you just kind of like hands on sh- hands on hips like kind of just like mm-hmm. looking about i think you notice that the x part of like how these trunks actually cross it it's actually a little bit closer towards the top of the trees where the x is made rather than like like mm-hmm. the the deeper like trunks of it and so you're getting like a little bit of like the leaves as well like in the mix of like like along the edges of like where this hole is and as you're looking around kind of thinking about like okay, shadow coin you're like just kind of looking around i think you see a space it's small but there's a portion of the shadow where the leaves cross and the trunks bend where you see the shadow of what vaguely seems like a coin the shadow that looks like a coin i think thorin 
takes one of his hands off his hips, not even looking back to where the others are, and just raises his hand over his head and does a motion to show that someone should come over. Yeah. Or everyone. Hano's still, like, off looking uh, into the sea, and I think Katarina's, like, still, like, really, like, flustered. Uh, And, Mm -hmm. like, but, like, sees that and says, thank God, a thing to do. Um, Mm -hmm. And, like, and says... Thorn, you see something, and like gets out and like starts running across the beach towards you. Felix follows her. Cat, right, Felix, am I stupid or does that look like a small circular shadow? It is. It is a circle. Yes. Well, Katarina, if you're comfortable enough with it, can you see about maybe trying to dig around the plaque that's still in the trench and see if we can't get that out? And Felix, do you want to start digging on this small shadow? For some reason. Sure. Felix, I think you, at this point, are getting a deeper understanding of all of this. As we've said before, the person whose map this used to be, the forgotten pirate lord, known for secrecy, from trickery, you all definitely did fall for a trap, for sure. This, the Radis eel thing was too sudden, too convenient to have been anything else other than a trap mundane means and mundane thinking are not going to work here. I think you just know that now. The digging led to a trap. This is a person who is trying to get you to play their game. And so as Felix sees this, the potential answer to another riddle of some magical means, seeing this coin made from the shadows of the trees in this like one particular like time of day, yeah, I mean this uh this this shadow of a coin, is it like coin sized? Yeah, it's about coin size. Can you try to pick it up? How do you try to pick it up? I just like I think I think that would occur to him. Just like maybe this isn't the like maybe this isn't like where we're supposed to dig. Like maybe this is maybe this is it. Maybe this is like something that we're looking for. Maybe not the thing that we're looking for, but... And this isn't like a, there's a right way or wrong way here. Just... Yeah. How does Felix try to grab the shadow coin? I think he, like, moves his hand, like, over it and, like, just kind of is is contemplating just, like, the way that the shadow of his hand affects it. And then maybe, like, tries to, like, just draws his hand, like, through it, you know, across the ground. As your fingers reach the point of... Well, I mean, I guess as you put your hand there, the shadow is now on top of your hand, right? And the coin is there on, like, the back of your hand as, like, you put your hand over it. And I think you, like, kind of flip your hand over so that, like, it's in your palm. And then you, like, clasp your hand. And when you open it, a black coin with an etching of a key in it. It's made of a metallic material, but you're not quite sure what it is. It's not like any metal that you've seen before. Hmm. Well, that went differently than expected. I'll take it. It means we don't have to dig anymore. Felix, like, uh, looks at the coin and is just, like, examining it and uh, says, You're Thorin. I'm pretty sure I owe you money from something. And just flips it to him. (laughs) Uh, He catches it, looks it over, uh, feels the weight of it, sees the etching of the key. And he kind of calls over. Felix, why don't we, uh, what do we hope, uh, Cat, bring that plaque out and maybe try to read that again, make sure we've got everything out of there that we need to, and then take everything we have back over to Hano. Seems fine. Cat, how close are you to excavating that nonsense? She, like, just, like, turns around, like, has it, like, up and says, got it, and, like, is holding up the wooden plaque. All right, love, let's go. And he uh, leans a hand down into the trench to help pull her up, and so we can all walk back over to Hano. Yep, she takes your hand and you help her out. As uh, the three of you make your way back, Felix, as you like start to make your way back to it, I think you see like glistening in the sand is like the shimmer of the hilt of your blade that you threw. Yeah, I, uh, he, he, he grabs it. As you pick it up and expect it, you hear his voice come through. Growing a heart, are we? No. And he uh, sheathes the blade and uh, says, just not leaving it up to fate. Taking control of your own destiny. (laughs) As much as you allow me to. Oh, Felix. 
I will forbid you from nothing. Every choice you make is your own. I'm merely here to offer options. And he seeps away. And I think as you, like, make your way out of the sands uh, uh, of the pit in the direction where they're walking, I think you catch Katarina looking back at you as you finish up the conversation with Damien. And then, like, as the two of you, like, kind of catch eyes, you see she, like, kind of and turns back and starts walking a little faster. So I would like to do something. What would you like to do, bud? So the way I'm picturing this is Thorin is going back towards Captain Hano. Mm -hmm. Katarina also is. She's like heading in that direction, not specifically towards Captain Hano, but like heading towards the boat more so than Captain Hano specifically. I would like to, I don't think I've done this yet. I would like to twist fate. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, when you try to twist fate, roll plus Spitfire. On a hit, pick one of the following options. Or you can just spend luck to just get what you would like. But Or you can roll to see uh, if you don't have to uh, spend one. Yeah, I'll roll to see. That is, where's my Spitfire? That is an 11. An 11, all right. On a hit, pick one of the following Let's options. See. Um. Yeah, I know exactly what this is. I'm picking uh, the weather, the wind, or the tides change. How do they help? Okay. I think what happens is the storm in the distance. Mm -hmm. It's not that it moves. It's just that other clouds sort of coalesce with it and it appears to to grow. It may not be the actual storm of the dragon dragon lord, but it is stretching uh, across the sky and it stretches over the beach that where where we are on and creates heavy rainfall. What I'm trying to do here is make it so that Thorin and Captain Hano cannot see, uh, cannot see, uh, or Felix and Katarina through the, uh, through the, through this curtain of rain. Okay. This is really interesting. As Katarina is walking up to the boat and Thorin, you're kind of like diverting, like making your way over towards Captain Hano and Felix, you're just kind of watching the situation. I think as you're like kind of like intentionally, like kind of watching, analyzing the situation, you hear a crack of thunder and you turn towards its source, back towards the mountain. And I think you start to see the storm growing, deep rumbling thunder. Rain coming soon. Thorin, you make it over to Hana, who is still just kind of on her knees, staring out, kind of distraught out at sea. Thorin comes over to her and says, Well, we figured out the coin bit. And kind of puts it in front of her face and shows her the strange dark metal circle with the indentation of a key on it. And uh, also says, uh, the other two are bringing back the plaque as well. So unless that map changes again, we have something. She kind of looks at the map again and sees that, well, the map has reappeared. Except the X that you all stopped at is gone. And there is just a path from where you are to the island. And an X on the island to the north. And she says, it's got to be it then. Hmm fucking coin we did all of this for a fucking coin what is it you're actually looking for Hano? i don't know i thought well treasure ancient artifact book i don't fucking know look when i found out that this was going to be a, a lost treasure of a pirate lord i mean i could you imagine being the people to discover that what would we we'd be the talk of the seas is that what you want to be the talk of the seas not really, I don't think. This definitely does feel like you're uh, you're definitely sizing up right now. <sighs> when you size someone up, roll plus vinegar. I believe in you. You can also use uh, you can you can spend rank or, or bond with people to 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 add anything. I don't know if you have rank with anyone that would be useful here. I think I've got rank with Hano, don't I? I believe so. I believe I had rank with everyone except Felix. I think that makes sense. So is that plus one? Yeah, you would spend uh, you would spend bond to 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, hold on. Even if you don't already, because I don't know if you do, because I think we did a thing where you had to do specific players rather than NPCs. When you protect a crewmate from a terrible fate, add one rank with them, which you did with Captain Hano. Mm. So now you have one rank with her. Don't forget about those bond and rank moves, baby. All right. Um. So, yes, uh, you would spend one. Uh, you would spend one bond with her, and that will give you a plus one to this roll. Which puts me at a bear roll of it is what it is. Okay. One fell on the ground. You can re-roll it. Uh, once one of them is a five, let me look at the okay, other. Okay, maybe you don't need to re-roll it. That's a three, that's an eight. Okay, I like this a lot. On a seven to nine, they hold one as well. So you hold two, you get to ask two of those questions, and she will ask one in return. Okay. How can I get you to be more transparent with me in all things? I want to support you, Hano. You're a good captain. I feel the issues that we've had have happened because there are just things I don't know or don't understand, but I want to. I want to be a friend. I want to be Bryn's friend, and I'm sorry for the things that I've said or done that have caused you harm. Things I've said that I'm guessing came out of ignorance to a situation that I don't have the pieces for. It's always hard trying to find people you can truly trust. Where I'm from, no one trusts anyone. It's not a a thing of hate or malice Mm -hmm. it is just the way things are everyone is trying to climb the same ladder whether or not they'll stab you in the back use your weaknesses against you use your kindness against you is always up in the air she turns to look at you as the storm clouds start rolling over darkening the beach i want to trust you thorn i want to trust all of you i just need to know If you'll trust me in return. Part of trust is being honest. I don't have all the pieces. I trust your intentions. I am afraid constantly. As long as there is transparency, I can tell you my opinion, and I will ultimately trust your judgment. But I need the transparency. I need to be sure that the orders I'm following are your own. Does that make sense? I trust you. I want to support you as captain of this ship, as you are. When you, Hano, make decisions, you make them well. But I need transparency, and I need it to be you calling the shots. Okay. I have one more, yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. Aside from that, aside from you being captain and me being your mantelo, as an individual, Hano as a person, how are you actually feeling? And how can I support you in the future? I'm scared, Thorin. I'm scared that this isn't going to be what I thought it was. And that good people died because I decided to go treasure hunting for a myth. Have you heard the story about the Vault of the Black Egg? No, tell me. It's a old story. A long time ago, off the coast of Espanora, there was a group of sailors, poachers more like, You see, um, around this area is the migration currents for giant sea turtles. And the big ones, the ones that make the currents, if you get here at the right time of year, you can find them before they pass. Big things, hundreds of years old, the oldest of them. And their shells are worth quite a bit. And so these poachers would come out here every year, hiding out from the locals who would obviously try to stop them. They'd catch, like, a couple of the ships, but they would keep on coming through, killing off these majestic creatures just to get their shells to sell them off. And one year, and as she's saying this, the storm is rolling over and rain is finally hitting the beach. One year, the people of this island, they went to the Dragon Lord at the time. I don't remember their name, but they went to them, asked, help us. Please, the turtles, they are the lifeblood of our villages. Without the currents they bring, the smaller turtles don't come, so we can't catch them. We're running low on food and all of the other small bits and things that they would make from the shells and and meats and such. And so the Dragon Lord, in its wisdom, comes down and destroys one of the ships of these poachers one day. The poachers don't take too kindly to that. They are angry, obviously. They want to keep hunting here, and they're making great money. And so they come up with a plan. 
They're going to get a bunch of ships, take them up to an island right off the coast, kind of around where the giant sea turtles will come and they laid a trap. The dragon lord saw all of the different ships amassing at the island and they come down hoping to rid them all in one fell swoop. But they didn't see the ballistas hiding amongst the trees as they landed. And they fired, <laughs> clipping their wings, piercing their side. Dragonlord screams out in pain. And the world begins to change around it. A blizzard hits the island. But the poachers, they're in too deep. They have to see this done. They have angered a dragonlord. And they go and they take their cutlasses and their spears and they try to slash at it, but its scales are too sharp. Only the force of the ballistas were actually able to do anything. And so they find themselves unable to kill the creature, the lord. So instead they decide to trap it. They take all the ropes and they slowly pull and yank and drag the dragon lord to a nearby cave deep deep below where it festered and anger and because it was a frost dragon the cave itself grew colder and froze even as the poachers were down there and using some of their tools they trapped it there blocking off the exit with stone and rubble no one knows how much long after but there was a new dragon lord born the frost dragon died deep in the cave alone some say that the pirate lord, or alleged pirate lord, Tordanet, found the cave centuries later. And instead of telling anyone of her discovery of if she found the remains of this dragon lord, dragon bones, rich, powerful, sturdy stuff, she decided to hide it, turning the cave into a cell, a locker, a vault. No one knows what she found that day, but there are many who say that she found another egg. That somehow, some way, she found the egg of an eighth dragon lord. A black egg. And she turns to you as lightning cracks. That is what I think we're going to find. I see. You think it's stupid, I know. No. We're looking for a child? Maybe, but something about it, something... The story is always called it a, a black egg, you know? As far as I know, none of the other dragon lords, they, none of them are black. None of their eggs are. And since I've met Bryn, I've seen all of this strange magic. She's talked to me about the stars and comets. It made me wonder, is it an egg that she found? Or maybe it's a fallen star? We normally spend our time taking stolen things from thieves to return them to their rightful home. Hearing this story from you, this dragon lord was stolen, and whatever remains, it deserves to be back in the hands of the culture who lost them. So no, I don't think it's stupid. In a lot of ways, it's as mundane and as important as anything else we've ever gone after. Someone has a hole in their heart where this egg is... Be them gone or still alive, I will help you return it to them. That is what I think. Thank you. Of course, I'll know. And I think our camera like zooms out as the two of you are kind of sitting here on the beach as rain falls and thunder booms overhead. And we move and pan over to the boat where Katarina and Felix are sitting. Hmm, yeah. So Felix has created this sort of, uh, this, this, this sort of curtain of rain to, uh, hide behind. I think, I think he's still, I think he's not, uh, even entirely confident in that. Mm -hmm. I think he, he, uh, puts a hand on Katarina's shoulder and, like, says, like, right into her ear, I need you to come with me right now. She turns towards you, a little bit startled by that. All right, where where are we going? Um, are there any like trees nearby? Yeah, no, there's still plenty of trees around here. Yeah, yeah. I think he just says over there behind those trees, and like starts starts walking and leading her there. Yeah, you see, she looks like kind of flustered and goes, oh, "Okay." 
and follows you over to these trees. Felix, once they're there, Felix uh, checks one last time to make sure that obscured. Oh, yeah. You're decently far away and Hanno and Thorin are still in conversation. And um, Felix draws his sword and points it at her. You see she, like, is startled, like, kind of jumps back a little bit, uh, says, Felix, what's wrong? What, what's going on? I need you to listen to me right now, okay? I'm dropping the theatrics, which I don't normally do, but I'm trying to save your life right now. Okay. I need you to tell me why someone would want you dead. What's, what, 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 what do you mean? I don't... I don't, I don't, uh, you see, like, she's, like, kind of, like, starting to, like, move backwards a little bit, as if she's, like, trying to see, like, if there is, like, space for her to, like, make a break for it, uh, sure. and, like, run. But I think she also knows that she's seen you do the impossible, and, like, yeah. is also somewhat afraid here. This seems like a parlay, <laughs> in a way. Mm. <laughs> kind okay, of. Okay, sure. Hold on. Yeah, I can when see you that. parlay with an interested party, offer something in roll plus polish. They take your offer. The fates may offer something more, but you'll invite risk. They want to see you uphold your end of bargain. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think parlay could work here. You are offering her life <laughs> in in this scenario. Sure. Uh, so roll plus polish. That is a 10. It's an 11 minus 1. Okay. On a 10 plus, they take your offer. The fates may offer you something more, but you'll invite risk. Interesting. Okay, cool. She says, I'm going to be uh, honest. I don't I don't really know what... Someone want me dead. Did someone hire you to... The gods. My, 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 uh, my, my siblings. Look, I am the uh, eldest. I'm currently the heir of our clan. And for the rules, as long as I'm alive, I will never see a penny. And I don't want the bastards to have anything. None of us deserve the fortunes left to us. Not for what our grandfather did to get it. And you see she's like st starting to like kind of scoot away a little bit from you. Felix sighs. He lowers his sword. He does not sheathe it, but he lowers it. And he says, I need you to understand. I'm a murderer, Katarina. More specifically, an assassin. I don't tell this to a lot of people because it is upsetting to them. She nods. And for my entire life, I have carried out my duty diligently until I got asked, not asked, I was told to kill you. And and the organization that I work for is not going to simply allow me to get away with not killing you, but I don't want to kill you. So what's going to happen? Felix, uh, Felix, uh, Felix pulls out his pipe. And uh, takes a takes a drag and, and blows some blows some smoke. And he just says, "I need you to be cooperative. Cooperative in what I am about to try to do." What's that? He uh, he he takes another puff of smoke and then says, "I think I think he he doesn't he doesn't say it under his breath, but he like is looking away from Katarina. Mm -hmm. He says, "Exactly how powerful are you?" Well, that depends. What do you need? I need to fool the sparrows. Hmm. An illusion of sorts. You told me once that smoke, the thing that you are, that you embody, that it obscures. So, obscure her. To the sparrows, to her siblings, to, to, the, to the world, Katarina is dead. I think as you say that, she goes, but if I die, they, they, can't, they can't get it. That dynasty has to end. I, I, if I die, they they get it. I think Felix turns back to Katarina, and you know what? I think I think Felix. I think he does something he doesn't do often, and that is he takes off his his hat, mm -hmm. and like the and he's usually wearing like one of the masks that he wears, and I think he takes them both off and is just like staring at her face to face, and he just says. I wish there was another way. What if I hired you? I could, I, I could hire you. You could kill them. I, we, I, I go into hiding. They, everyone thinks I'm dead, and then, oh God, what am I even saying? And like she kind of goes, I, it won't. And Damien's voice comes through. It could be done, and I would do it for you. No strings attached. I like the side of you. I need to stay on the ship, don't I? Oh, yes. You still have an arrow and a drone to get me. 
Exactly. Consider it done. The voice seeps away. Felix sheathes his sword now and goes over to, to Katarina. And he says, I'll do it if that's what you want, if that's what you need. I don't, I don't know. I was just, I was just saying, I don't, I was, I was, how can I trust that you won't kill me? I think he says, I think he says, I don't know what I can do now to make you trust me, but I have wagered everything on this ship and this crew. I need this. And not that she knows anything about me, but if Captain Hano finds a murdered body on this ship, I'm far from the last person she'd just she'd suspect why do you trust me not to tell anyone or about the voice you talk to i can't i have nothing i have no leverage in this other than what i'm hoping may be a something of gratitude because gratitude you fucking brought me over here and pointed a blade at me if i didn't kill you someone would she kind of turns and looks down i've risked a lot to save your life when we were in the pit of eels, I could have done it there. It would have looked like an accident. It would have been a horrible tragedy, but I didn't. I'm supposed to be grateful that you didn't stab me in the fucking back. Maybe not grateful, but I'd, I'd hope it lets you know whose side I'm on. I'll need to think about it, if I'm going to hire you or not. If it helps at all, for a long time, almost everyone that I've killed, I've told myself that in some way they deserve it. You learn to believe your own lies very quickly. I'm sure. And she starts walking back towards the boat. And Katerina... She stops and turns. I don't believe that you deserve to die. I haven't always truly believed that my victims don't deserve to die, but I thought I'd let you know. Well, thanks, I guess. And she turns and goes. And as the two of you make your way back towards the boat, uh, Captain Hano and Thorin finish their conversation, and the four of you converge. Captain Hano goes, All right, I'm sick of fucking being out here in the rain. Let's get back to the ship. And starts to climb, like throws like some of the things into the, into the boat. And I think you all pile on in and start paddling. And that is where we are going to end this session. Wow, wow, we were. What a, what a, what a session, gang. What a session indeed. Damn. Yeah. Oh my God. Lots Ooh. of, lots, lots of drama going on. Ooh. Lots of drama. Lots of drama. Lots of fun pirate adventure. I hope you all enjoyed it. I sure did. Yes, absolutely. I did. Yeah. I did. So glad I didn't have to kill Felix. <laughs> <laughs> so glad. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Felix still has time to fuck some shit up. Yeah. Um, amazing. Uh, yeah, let's do the end session, uh, end session move. All right. Brrr, ding, starting off with Thorin. Have you defeated a major foe? Um, I mean, I think I got a few of the Radis eels. I don't think it was anything major, though. Yeah, you know, that's fair. Did you gain significant treasure? Yes. Yeah, you got, you got the coin. Did get that coin. Uh, did you accomplish one of your character's goals this session? Sure did. Uh, I was able to apologize to Hano, and I was able to... Uh, I, I don't have to dig, at least right now, in the ground anymore, and I yeah. appreciate that. Yep, yep, yep. You have found the thing. And uh, so, yeah, you're going to mark one experience. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, you get to choose one from the end move. Uh, but also, I'm going to call this a big finale. This was a big emotional beat for all of us. And also uh, a big um, ch a check mark in things to do to finish this adventure. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a big finale. So you get to choose two from the list. You get to mark one experience, add one to your rank with someone, or clear all of your weaknesses. Which I don't know if you have any weaknesses. No, I don't. Uh, you know I'm an experience junkie, so I'm going to mark two experience. Oh, two experience. Okie dokie. Look at you. Awesome. Uh, Felix, did you defeat a major foe? 
Nah. Gain significant treasure? Yeah. Yeah, you got the yeah, you got the thing. Uh yeah. accomplish one of your character's goals this session. Yeah, I'd say so. Yep, you definitely did learn about Katarina and also kind of get away with whatever you decided to do. Tentatively. Tentatively, you yes. Tentatively got away with it. Amazing. So just uh like Thorin, you get to choose two. Mark one additional experience, add one rank with someone, or clear all of your weaknesses. I do believe that you currently do have one weakness. I think you have the bedeviled weakness currently. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I wanna I wanna hit you with this. Uh, I, and I'm and I'm and I'm wondering if you will agree, because I wasn't even planning this or thinking this, but mm-hmm. The next to all of the weaknesses, there is a, a thing in 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 brackets afterwards. Mm-hmm. And that is, if I'm correct, like what you do to get rid of the weakness. That is correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard one moment of humanity to solve the bedeviled one. 100 yeah. percent. That yeah, you clear bedeviled. Awesome. Amazing. So uh now you can choose to add experience or uh, add rank. I'm going to I can't I don't really feel like I can justify adding rank with anyone. You could add rank with uh with Katarina. Because it's not even like a positive thing necessarily. It is a, a symbolic of your relationship with them. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. That actually sounds good. Okay. I'm going to mark one experience and, and one, uh, rank. one rank. Amazing. How do you spell Katarina? Uh, K-A-T-A-R-I-N-A. Okay, I got it right the first time. <laughs> it's just... Yep. got in my head about it amazing okay very cool very cool very cool awesome uh well thank you so much everybody for listening this has been our uh our fun little uh beach the the beach gang uh <laughs> this, is the beach this, episode. Episode. this is the beach, beach episode. episode oh man <laughs> that's what i'm calling uh, it that's the title the beach episode uh <laughs> it's not uh but uh yeah no, no no this has been so much fun i've been i've been loving that these are giving us a chance to really kind of focus in on each of these characters rather than just all as a group because now i think whatever we're moving on to next will have a lot more depth and a lot more color uh for all of these characters and i'm so so excited and i hope you all are too um gus where can people find you on the internet you can find me on the internet on social media sites like twitter at August underscore Nobby. That's K N O B B E. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, I think. Yeah. And that's it. I tried Mastodon. I couldn't figure it out. Nah, Mastodon I don't get it. sucks. Mastodon sucks. I don't sucks. get it. Sorry for all of you Mastodon users out there. I'm hmm. also not a fan. <laughs> And then yeah yeah I mean you know keep an eye out on on uh, on on maybe maybe well no I'm I just Twitter or Instagram are the are the two because I was gonna say like sh- like keep an eye out on like I don't know maybe Spotify maybe mm-hmm. YouTube mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. um, but it, I'm just if I have stuff on there I'm just gonna post it to yeah. Twitter and Instagram yeah so no, look no. at those. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense uh ellis where can people find you on the internet you can find me on twitter at horror writer uh spelled w-h-o-r-e underscore o-r underscore the word writer uh, amazing and as always you can uh uh do uh, follow our podcast on twitter instagram and tumblr at tales yet told it's where we upload all of the information and little side bits and, you know, just kind of talk to all of you all. And, you know, if, if you want to keep stay updated about this or even Prayers in the Static, the sci-fi actual play live stream that is technically also Tales Yet Told, but in a live stream format and with me and my good friend Ibrahim. Um, you can uh, find more information on that on on social media on on the on on that twitter and instagram and tumblr that i've already said and you can find more links to everything and more information about the show on our website at talesyettold.com <sighs> i guess that brings me to me i've been kendrick and you can find me everywhere on the internet at kendo makes films that's all i've got to say about that i'm if if it's a social media i'm probably on it other than mastodon and hive and uh, bebo there's you probably a remember? lot yeah okay i'm not on most of them i'm on if if i'm there i'm kendo makes films yeah if if there's not a kendo makes films i'm not there 
You can uh, find me on Google Plus at uh, <laughs> Jesus you, Christ. You can find me on MySpace. You can find me on Hobble Hotel at Kendra <laughs> <Lakes> Films. <laughs> no, um, and we've hit rancid. We've hit rancid. rancid, you know. But there's only one way to solve rancid, and that's going out, getting enough sleep eating enough food, drinking enough water, and taking care of yourself. Because self-care is so important, especially in the new year, gang. Come on, you gotta take care of yourself. 2023, new year, new you. And by that, I mean, like, go take care of yourself. Hello, pot. I'd like you to meet Kendrick the Kettle. Mm -hmm. Ah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know what? Don't forget to love yourself like we love you. Bye. 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 Rainbow Roll. Our stories are our voices. voices.